Electra Battery Materials has a near production refinery for critical metals located in North America. Trent Mell is CEO. Trent, always a pleasure. Thank you, Michael. Good to see you again. Electra Battery Materials is the new name for First Cobalt. Now, Trent, I've noticed a trend with the mining companies and the junior companies in the battery metal space that they've been going downstream. I think about Sabanye Stillwater attempted buying a nickel smelter in Brazil. There's Jevoir Global that recently acquired uh, another Brazilian refinery. What's going on? Yeah, I think what's going on is the, the final products that we need for the EV revolution are different from what we've traditionally had. So you've got smelters in Canada and elsewhere around the world that are producing alloy products, whether it be nickel or, or cobalt. And what we're talking about in a battery is we call it a salt. It's a powdered form. Uh, those, uh, those facilities don't exist by and large outside of China. And so our role as the first mover in North America to be the first uh, refiner of battery grade cobalt and the plan is to replicate that recycling nickel and, and perhaps manganese as well over time. Uh, help us out, uh, Trent. Uh, how is Electra different uh, from recyclers uh, like uh, Lifecycle or uh, Tesla's big recycling partner, Redwood? Yeah, recycling dust is um, it's an important ingredient. The market's still pretty small, right? Once you start building batteries here on the continent in 2025, battery scrap comes into play. And then longer term, the off-market batteries. But to, to us, it's additive of a bigger strategy. The ecosystem we're targeting is really take the material in from the miners, we'll refine it. And if we can do everything co-located in one site, you would then send all that material to a localized precursor. That's the first step, the battery making step, a precursor manufacturer. And putting all that together achieves some pretty significant synergies, both on the capital and the operating side. And so recycling, it just makes the products greener. You start to bring that in with your nickel and your cobalt and you've got a better product. So we're, we're viewing recycling as being part of a bigger whole. When the plant is uh, built out, where is the material gonna come from? Initially, the cobalt material is coming from the DRC. So like the rest of the world, right? I mean, 80% of cobalt right now is being refined out of China. And this is what the Inflation Reduction Act is trying to target, right? Try, trying to offshore that. And so we are at the front end of doing that. But it does come from the DRC. Over time, Idaho will come into play for us. Recycling comes into play. But uh, nickel, uh, you've got more choices. But certainly cobalt Africa is going to be core to the EV strategy for years to come. How's the progress? Uh, you had a Q2 earlier this month, right? Yeah, we did. Um, look, we're succumbing to inflationary pressures, supply chain pressures like everybody. We had, you know, we had six or eight issues we were juggling, right, trying to keep on schedule. And the bottom fell out when six of our solvent extraction tanks didn't pass inspection. So have to start that over. Uh, obviously, it's a safety quality issue. And, and as a result, we're three months delayed on delivery of these tanks. And it's only once and we've got, you know, 45 tanks coming. But those six until they're there, you can't finish the instrumentation, the piping, the, the electrical. So we're now looking at a spring startup. It's okay. Well, it's not okay. I mean, it's more cost and more time. But at the end of the day, our vision for North America really takes root 2025. So 23, 24, the commercial contracts we're working on are going to go offshore. Uh, but the real rubber is going to hit the road here in two years. So we got, you know, 23, 24 to get the supply chain up and running, both recycling, cobalt, advance the nickel strategy. Uh, the cell plants come in 2025, and that's when it really starts to make a difference. Your finance situation? Yeah, we, we're pretty good. I mean, we were fully financed until until this latest uh, this latest creep, uh, both in the budget and the schedule. So, you know, we're looking at you know, maybe 20 million Canadian that we need to fill. Um, having said that, we've got an asset that'll have a replacement value of some 250 million, and we've got 39 million of debt against it. So there's room to do something there. We've got a shelf prospectus, potential strategic investors. So lots of lots of irons in the fire. We'll we'll kind of figure that out. To me, I'm more focused on schedule keeping the costs under control and getting to production and, and coming to market here soon with some announcements on who our supply chain partners are going to be. Uh, I think you said uh, it's about two years out, uh, but um, I mean, refineries have uh, in the smelters have been in uh, the news uh, just because of uh, what's happening in Europe and uh, due to the high energy costs. Any impact on what you're doing, Trent? Yeah, with us, when we look at it, the operating costs, the reagents that we use to extract the cobalt is, is far and away the biggest, uh, the biggest input. That's so about 70% of our OPEX uh, power comes in after labor, so labor power, and we're on hydroelectricity. So we benefit from an abundance of power here in Ontario. Um, if we look to expand into Quebec, same same issue, abundance of power, and it's obviously, it's very green, so it won't impact us one bit. Uh, how's your neighbors, and uh, what is it like uh, expanding out, uh, Trent? Yeah, look, I think I think of late, so if I, let me go back to the Inflation Reduction Act that was uh, signed into law by, by the president quite recently. The phone, uh, I guess metaphorically, the phone's kind of ringing off the hook, right? Because you got that $7,500 credit that makes a huge difference in your vehicle sales, but you don't get one iota of that if you have any critical materials coming out of China. 
And so when you got 80% of cobalt being refined in China, 90% of nickel, 93% of manganese, you got a real problem. And so as a first mover, it's a, it's a huge advantage to us. It plays to our plays to our strategy, but it also means we're no longer, we don't even need to be competitive with China, not to overstate it. But but it's if it's a difference of getting your credit or not, refiners such as Electra are going to become crucial to the auto supply chain as we build out. That was the uh, Inflation Act, I believe, that was uh, just signed uh, by the Biden administration, uh, which also included uh, not the U.S., uh, but also, uh, I think it was also uh, Canada, Mexico as well, within uh, within the um, strictures on that. Uh, let's, um, now, we mentioned at the start, uh, the name of the company used to be uh, First Cobalt, and uh, you've gone to Electra. You're kind of, uh, you widened your aperture, I believe, uh, for the battery metal space uh, trend? Yeah, effectively on the refining angle, um, it's a hydrometallurgical process that, that we desperately need here on the continent. So our lane is very much on the refining side, and we're going to expand across product lines, nickel being the next one. But yeah, first cobalt, our roots still take us back to Idaho, and we do have mineral deposit uh, there, and, and potentially a new discovery. So Idaho, uh, again, back to the onshoring strategy and the Inflation Reduction Act um, coming back into focus. So you're going to hear a lot more about Idaho as we commercialize our, our first refinery. Bring us up to date uh, with Iron Creek and Idaho, uh, Trent. Yeah, it's been a slow burn for us. Uh, you know, as a CEO, I've got to allocate capital to where I'm going to get the best returns. And so getting to cash flow was the priority. We did do some drilling though at Iron Creek. We know that our deposit there, it's got inferred and indicated, you know, roughly almost 5 million tons, but you know, we feel good. It's open east, open west. It's even higher grade at depth. So we know we can grow that. Meanwhile, we tested a a brand new target called Ruby, a kilometer and a half away that looks very similar to Iron Creek and to the credit of the team there. The first two holes hit mineralization exactly where we expected. Waiting for assays. I am encouraged that this is going to validate our view that the belt has a lot more than one or two deposits offer to North American supply. Uh, lastly, um, you say that uh, you're keeping on top of the uh, schedules, Trent, uh, milestones over the next 12 months. Well, I guess, I mean, there's the, the the grind and the progress of the construction. So we'll keep updating the market every, you know, sort of 45, 60 days. Um, so it's keeping on top of deliveries and execution. And the site, we regularly tweet out and post photos of people that follow the progress. Um, in the interim, we're waiting for assays from Ruby, from Idaho. And so we're going to have to stop saying Iron Creek, I hope, and start talking about Idaho writ large if this uh, if this pans out. Um, so that'll come in the next uh, probably probably in September and likewise uh, into the fall uh, battery recycling. We're going to do a new demonstration plant. So our site, given we've got an existing legacy refinery that we're expanding, but before we decommission the existing circuit, we're going to run 50 times black mass, and that will be proof of concept on a commercial scale of our recycling flow sheet. Um, so that would be the other one. And then and then we've got a couple of studies going on. We've got to release our scoping study on a nickel sulfate plant, and then a study on a cobalt expansion into the province of Quebec. So lots of catalysts on the way to cash flow as we round out the year. Trent, thanks for speaking with Gitco. Thank you. Appreciate it, Michael. He is Trent Mel, a CEO of Electro Battery Materials. My name is Michael McCray. You're watching Gitco Mining. <laughs>